awesome. Thank you so much, Caitlin's Cottage. You do amazing here. Um, this place is amazing. You did awesome. Thank you, Caitlin Cottage. Thank you, Family Crypto Dinner. Thank you, for America. And thank you for everybody who did all of us. A great night and with a great palm. And thank you all. Love you all. God bless. Hey everybody. Hello? Hello? Okay, I'll be back back because I have to run back there and turn this on. making fun of us today at karate and I was like mm -mm. I don't know they were like doing this little thing and then they were all like doing it and I was and they were like I went to school for this and I was like shut up I didn't say anything have been like, excuse me, I went to school for this. <laughs> Testing. Technical difficulties. I probably could be. You want a different mic? thing or just the mic? Right. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Well, here at the beginning, there's just a few people funneling in, so we're going to do a, little, a few intro things. Uh, we're really excited this year. We wanted something, we wanted to start off with something really exciting. So we have two motorcycles on the stage. So I want you to check under your chairs. There's the ticket. Somebody's walking away with a motorcycle. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah, there's a couple of guys in this church that would be pretty upset with me tomorrow morning <laughs> if these bikes were gone. <laughs> well, we're really glad that you all came to this training today, that you uh, braved the weather. Um, we've got a lot we're going to cover today. but. Of course, we want to start with a, a word of prayer. So, if you all would join me, we're going we're gonna to begin with a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for being present here with us as we dive into some important work today together. We're just honored that we get to be a part of sharing your love to everyone um, on this earth, Father God, and building your kingdom, Lord. We pray that today you would bring our attention to the places that it needs to be, God. Help us to take all the information that we need to take in because we, we know we have got some important work to do. But also, God, I pray that through this all that you would, you would preserve our joy because this really is a celebration, Father God. So we know there's work to do. We know we've got a lot to learn, but we want us to be fun and enjoyable. So we pray that you would, you would just preserve that joy today. Be with us today, Lord, in your name. Amen. Well, the team is going to start filtering in, and as they do, um, I'll, I'll introduce everyone. First, I have a question. This is, it's always fun for us to see. If this is your first night to shine, could you raise your hand? Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. So just for the visual, so that you're returning as a volunteer, could you also raise your hand now? Nice. Yeah, thank you for being with us. What's really cool across, so this is our third training, and what has been true both years, all the trainings, all the volunteering, is that it's about 50%. Each year, we get 50% of new, folk, new folks joining on with us, which is just awesome. Well, so thank you so much for being here. We're going to get started. My name is Eli Tracy. I am one of the associate pastors here at Family Christian Center. Also joining our steering committee team from FCC are Scott Herod and Sarah Chaffins. And from Caitlin's Cottage, we have Kelly, Jess, who's out there getting you all your information, and Chris. This year, we really wanted to focus on 
legacy, the legacy and sustainability of this event. So we took a couple of steps to do that. And one of those was bringing on a couple of young interns. So we have, would you please join me in welcoming Gabby and Maddie. We want to see this event continue. And so in order to do that, we got to bring on some young people. Um, they already have a lot of ideas that they've shared with us. And it's really great having them on the team. All right, guys, well, now that we are started, I'm going to invite Scott up to the stage. He's got some really cool updates that he wants to share with you, especially for those of you who have seen the event before. I think you're going to really appreciate uh, some of the changes that we've made according to your feedback. Hi, guys. Doing okay? This is going to be interactive, so don't sit there like bumps on a log, all right? You guys good? Oh, my gosh. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. I'll be as quick as I can. Um, there's a lot of information you're going to get today and a lot of updates, too. So pretty awesome. I want to go over a few things really quick, the vision slide. So Tim Tebow Foundation's vision is to work with churches around the world to provide an incredible prom night experience centered on God's love for people with special needs ages 14 and older. I mean, I know you guys know this, or you should if you're here, but that in itself is just absolutely incredible, and it's a worldwide thing, and we'll talk a little more about that. Um, Night to Shine is held every year the Friday before Valentine's Day. It's becoming a worldwide movement, and that's the truth. So you'll see some stats as we go along that are just kind of mind-blowing where it's gone in six years. So we're in year three. It's in year six of the existence, so we got in kind of halfway through, and uh, just absolutely incredible. So just some stats uh, from last year. You can see the amount of host sites and states and countries and volunteers. It's kind of crazy how how huge this thing is, is becoming. Crazy awesome. Man, you guys, seriously, for real. This is going to be really tough if you're like, yeah, no, everybody was up late shoveling or worrying about weather or something. I don't know. So the event itself, February 7th, uh, 2020, volunteer check-in is very, very important. So please hone in on this one for a minute. So volunteer check-in is from 4 to 5 o'clock. I'll talk more about how that's going to happen for you guys, for the first-timers. It's the same. Uh, for those, and I'll talk about some enhancements as well as we get into uh, a little more detail. But the other thing we did is the event conclusion. Because of something else exciting I'm going to talk about in a second, we extended the event until 10 o'clock. So very, very good thing there as well. Uh, just an important information. Year one, we were kind of struggling with the photo thing. We kind of encouraged or basically said we're not allowed photos. So year two, we actually included that into the registration process so we have the ability for you to take as many pictures through the night as you want, post them all over social media, wherever you want to go with them. Please do that. I want to encourage you to and get the get the just the incur the excitement of the event out in front of everybody. Um, a couple really fun enhancements that we're doing this year, trying to make things a little more interactive. We have the uh, Kacha dancing camp. So you guys been to sporting events where people kind of go crazy when they're on the jumbotron type thing? We'll be doing that in here on the dance floor. Kind of a fun thing. And then um, obviously the live photo. So we're going to be doing a thing with hashtags. So make sure you know the hashtag. We'll be scrolling those through the night on the screens as well as you guys are posting and hashtagging the event, which is pretty cool. So some really cool updates that I want to go through. And we love this picture. That's one of our favorites. I think that was from year one, wasn't it? Uh, pretty incredible. So the um, stats really fast. I just want to roll through this. So year one, if you guys were involved and remember, uh, we had to do a lot of recruiting. People in this area didn't know what, the, what Night to Shine was. Had to go talk at some churches, some schools, some different things. We just were all over the place trying to get, you can imagine 375 volunteers is quite a bit, <clears throat> especially for a new event. Um, so as we got into it, um, it took us, I would say, I think it was a couple months to fill, our, um, to fill our registrations up. And year two went so much faster, basically was 15 hours for our 144 on our guests. Well, does anybody remember this year? It's like 40, yeah, 42, 40, 45 minutes, something like that. We were full, which is, isn't that awesome in itself? So that's just the, how great this event is and how exciting it is and how much people are looking forward to it. Another exciting thing that because of that, we ended up with at least about, it was around 60 or so folks that went on our wait list. And all of us were kind of, I mean, our hearts were heavy for that because we want everybody as much as possible to, to basically take a part in the event. <clears throat> so if you've seen and heard also, we were able to expand with a lot of creative, uh, creative thinking and just some out-of-the-box ideas, um, expand the event by to 204. So that's pretty incredible. So we went from 144, exactly. That's definitely applause-worthy. 
to 200 and 400 guests. That's also the reason that we extended the event because we have that many more folks in here, give them that many uh, more opportunities to do the, the stuff we have planned for them. Um, just a couple other things, the balloon drop, we doubled it because we, we, it was just awesome and we wanted to make it more awesomer. And yes, I said awesomer. Um, so a really important thing we'll talk about too is we actually flopped to get that. So to make that happen, we're gonna have tables up on the stage. That's the only way we could fit more folks in here for the prom itself. So you'll see, uh, basically the DJ was up here last year, or the past two years. The DJ is gonna be in front of the sound booth and the dance floor will be in the back. <coughs> so we're basically just rotating the room, but using the space up on the stage up here. Uh, one really cool thing too is we have, um, we struggled a little bit with wheelchair access when we went through the limo rides. Um, so this year we actually have a trolley, which is pretty awesome from uh, Team Johnson Limo, which has wheelchair access, which is great, and then also the stretch limo. Cool thing for you guys as well, from a volunteer standpoint, so over um, when you park, it's adjacent basically to here, it's behind Second Baptist, is where the volunteer parking is. So if you're new, volunteer parking is off site and we shuttle you over. So the trolley will be doing shuttles along with Good Sam uh, buses from Good Sam School. So that'll all be taking place. Last year we struggled a bit and had to bring some uh, vans over. You know, it kind of wasn't a good thing, obviously, with the ladies and the dresses and everything else. So now, this year, for sure, we're going to have the trolley starting at 4 o'clock, and that'll be happening, and then the buses, as soon as they're done with their routes, they'll get going as well. So that'll be really cool. You guys can take a ride on the trolley. Uh, for those that aren't um, a buddy, uh, which you'll be able to do that through the night as well. Um, another cool thing, so for the... Uh, uh, it's actually, I'll talk about that in a minute. I was, I'll just say it now. So the, uh, it's on my mind. With the volunteer parking, um, one of the other f pieces of feedback that we received was um, waiting outside, waiting in my car. We encourage you not to bring your coats in because there's nowhere to put them. So people were kind of cold. So we worked with the Dream Center. If you guys know what the Dream Center is in Defiance, it's also back on that side. They're going to actually open up and give tours of their facility starting at 3.30. So you'll be able to park over there, go inside. They're actually, they actually told me they're going to have snacks and coffee and stuff too, which will be kind of cool. And then so you can kind of go in there if you want to check out that building if you've never seen it. So met with them and just a great, great organization. Um, so you can check out their building and then grab the, grab the shuttles over and we'll go through more of how that's going to work with the, with the tour. Another really cool thing that I absolutely love and I'm excited about, I think more than these, these guys just because it's fun. I'm just kidding. I just talk about it all the time. But the, we're adding a magic show. So how cool is that if you haven't heard that? So, Maddie, what would you say? I am excited. A magic show. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So we're just trying to make the event that much better every year. And it was just one of those things where, like, hey, we know a guy. And I think it'll be awesome. So we're going to do, like, five to eight-minute shows. It'll be in the activity room. We'll go over that later where that's going to be. But super cool. Just really exciting. It is. Thank you. Thanks for joining my excitement. Seriously. Love it. Well, if you can't find me and you need me through the night, check in the tent with the magic show, okay? That's probably where I'll be. Um, really cool thing, too, we have the red carpet announcing that goes on um, when, they, when the honored guests come in. So just happy to announce we have Chris Peterson from WTOL. She's going to be one of the announcers calling out the buddy names, which is pretty neat. And then Rick Small will be back as well for that. So we'll have two people kind of rotating through as the, as the honored guests come through. Just kind of neat to have some personalities and, you know, some local people, people that they recognize when they come in. And... Um, I say something else about that. Oh, and also, uh, Christy Lee will be back again. So they'll be doing live spots again like they did the past couple years. So we'll be live on the news and all that. Just a really cool thing. We really like that. Um, let's see. I think that's cool. So next slide, probably. Clothing. Um, you guys that have been here kind of know it's all the same. The, the addition that we're going to talk about a lot today is the uh, security and the ushers. So those color shirts, if you see them, we'll talk about that more later. The black pants and white shirt if you're a table attendant, if you got that job. Uh, the buddies, same deal, get fancy. Guys, do it up. I want to see some good looking guys. I'm serious. Like the, the past two groups that we've had, I've actually had some reaction. Man, man. It's good stuff. Um, and then honored guests, we'll talk about the lanyards. Dance floor attendants, same thing, uh, get fancy, you know. Uh, one comment that was made that's really, really good feedback are shoes. So for the dudes, make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes. But I'm just kidding. So uh, ladies, I know a lot of recommendations were wear tennis shoes under your dresses because your feet will be tired because there is a lot of walking going on. So if you're a buddy for the first time, especially kind of pay note to that. Uh, valet limo, dress for the weather if you're on that duty. And room attendants, 
uh, the shirts. Basically, everybody else, we wanna, want you to wear your shirts so we all look uniform and you know, it looks really good. We love these new shirts, by the way. They're awesome. Um, dress, remember we're in a church? Oh, I said the shoe thing already. We're good. I think that's all right. Event schedule. So, four to five I mentioned. Make sure you guys, I stress this again, okay? So for us, as we're checking everybody in so we're not freaking out with those people that are not here, please do everything in your ability to be here during that window. The sooner you get here, the better, obviously, because then you can kind of soak up the environment. What you're seeing right now, this place, if you've been here before, gets totally transformed, and it's absolutely breathtaking inside. We've got some really cool stuff planned for the decorations this year as well. Um, 5.30 to 7, basically, that's when the honored guests, that whole process starts, and it is just chaos from that point on. And it's good chaos, organized chaos, but it's fun. It just, it's nonstop, and the night's going to be over before you blink. It'll feel that way anyway. So all that stuff happens, basically go through uh, the registration process, the pairing, uh, the red carpet, and we'll walk through this as we do our tour as well. But everybody gets their, their corsages, boutonnieres, tables, uh, come in to find your table, the quiet rooms, dancing, and the karaoke stuff will all be open at that point as well. So 7.30 to 8.30, basically all the activities open up. And then at 8.30 is when we'll do our crowning this year. So that's the, the big moment of the night that is like the culmination and it's, mag it's so magical if you guys have never been a part of it hence why we doubled the balloon drop and it's uh, going to be it's going to be fantastic again so heck, having especially that many more people we don't really know what to expect <laughs> with uh, 60 more honored guests but other than it's going to be great um, and then we'll do basically do our wrap-up and stuff after that so we'll close the rooms down at a certain point um, i think the schedules are coming up as well but so what you'll see is the detailed schedule very, very simple, straightforward. If it's green, it's open. If it's red, it's not. Everything across the top are the room names that's listed and the activities that are in those rooms. So pretty straightforward. This will also, for buddies, if you're a first-time buddy, that'll be on the back of your lanyard so you can reference that at any point in time that you need to. We talked about parking already, but just to kind of give you an idea, again, East 2nd Street's out here, 2nd Baptist is adjacent out there on the other side of the road, and there's plenty of parking out back that's where your volunteers will all park and then get shuttled over. Layout, just a couple things to point out on here really quick. As you can see, uh, the layout for this room, so the ballroom, you can see it's flopped, and the stage will have the tables, as I mentioned. That's how we're fitting the extra honored guests in. Um, a couple of things other to mention is the red boxes on there. So a new thing this year, based on your guys' feedback, was the uh, not, some people were here, and they're just like, we don't know where to go or what to do or who to ask, even for that matter. So we've added usher stations and ushers themselves. We'll actually have four usher stations, three floating ushers. So if you get, if you need something answered or if you have a question, find somebody in a red shirt and they will take care of it. And one thing I joked about before was that the ushers are like, oh my gosh, how am I going to know all that? But we'll, we'll train you guys as we go and it'll, it'll be good. So Dana, you're the only usher here tonight. Sorry, dude. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else to point out on here. We'll, as we go through the tour, we'll, we'll make sure we cover this as well for those that, uh, that haven't seen it, but pretty similar setup all the way through uh, with registration, and we'll talk about that change when we actually get out there. It's easier to visualize. Magic show is in the activity room. We'll go through that. I keep bringing it up. I am. And uh, you know, he'll probably want to make me disappear is what he'll want to do. I think we're good on that for now. That's okay. Yes, record time. Up to Kelly now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I think they were cl clapping for me, though. <laughs> okay, so one of the most important things um, that we have for our Night to Shine, which is different than a lot of other Night to Shines, or maybe even all of them that we know of, is that we have a buddy name tag. Tim Tebow Foundation basically suggests lining up people who are buddies, and as honored guests come through, just pairing them up as they go. Um, we know better, so we'll do better. And so this is sort of our way to make sure that appropriate people are paired with honored guests that might need a little bit more attention. So if you're sitting there and you're 16 years old, and as I go through these things and mention thickeners and seizure disorders, just know that we know you're 16 and most likely you're not paired with somebody that's going to have extensive <laughs> needs. But it is important that everybody here knows that we have these. Each buddy will be wearing them. 
And essentially what this does is it gives all the information that we need to know about all of the honor guests that are here. So each buddy will have one for the honor guests that they're paired with. You can see on here that in bold, it'll have the name of the individual, the name of the honor guest. Underneath there, the EC numbers, the emergency contact number. So should we have some reason to have to get a hold of somebody, it's right there. We don't have to go dig it out of paperwork and files and things like that. The next little part on there are just some fun facts. We asked our honored guests just to give some little tidbits about themselves. They're good conversation starters. So it's one of those things that you can refer to if you're you know, just trying to get to know your honored guest. I promise you that they'll have lots to say to you. They're super excited. Um, the area that's circled there on the right, or I guess left if you're looking at it, um, RR stands for restroom, so Eli, thank goodness, is independent. That was uh, a big task for his family, so he's finally there. Um, gosh, come on, you guys. <laughs> um, all right, so the next one is uh, dietary and allergy. If there's any needs there, food allergies, or any reason that somebody would have something that would stand out, that would be listed there. Um, our, the next part says precautions, so this would be maybe a seizure disorder or maybe um, that lights are a concern for them, some kind of sensory need there. And then for those that have medications that need to be administered the night of Night to Shine, they must meet their caregiver in order to get the medications. We're not going to be responsible for distributing those, but the medication time will be there, and then the honored guest and the buddy will go to the instant command room, and you'll see that on your tour and that way they can get their medications as needed there. Up at the top right-hand corner, there's a yellow circle with a number four. This is the table number, so that in case you forget where you're supposed to be going, we tell you that at the beginning. In year one, we realized that by the time we told the volunteers to the time that the event actually started, everybody lost. They had no idea what table they were sitting at. So that will be on there. And then new this year, because of the number of honor guests that we have, there are two, there are going to be two dots on the bottom. And what these are for are karaoke and limo rides. So as an individual goes through, our, t our attendants will punch a hole in that area. Now, what this will be is that it's not going to eliminate somebody from having an opportunity to go again. It's just when they get up there, um, we're going to take those that haven't been punched first so that we can share, share the fun. Um, and then we also put a limit on our karaoke singing. Um, last year, I think what Scott said, the last training, that instead of having 10 minute ballads happening, um, we've limited the time to two minutes. So it just cuts it down a little bit so that we can move on for other people. Okay, so then the back of all of the buddy lanyards will have the seating arrangement as well as the schedule that we, me we mentioned before. So you can refer back to those. A few things as far as emergency situation goes. Um, obviously, we have a lot of people in this building at once, and so having safety measures in place is a big thing for us, and we want to make sure that everybody that's at Night to Shine, whether you're on our guest or, or a volunteer, um, that it's our number one priority to make sure everybody's safe while they're here. So a few things just to talk about so that we're all on the same page. The biggest thing you, can, thing you can do, especially with our honored guests, um, is to stay calm in an emergency. They're going to react from the reactions that they see, and as long as we can hold it together long enough to make sure everybody's safe in the situation, that's gonna help in the long run. Our goal is to be prepared for the worst possible case scenario, so we have gone through things as a team. We have an incident command here, which is a team from Defiance Regional Hospital that will man the station and have um, nurses, on staff as well as we actually have um, an ER doctor who's working the event as well. So we're prepared for the medical things and between the church professionals, security, etc., we should be pretty good for the rest of those events. So um, everybody will have instructions. If there's an emergency situation, just wait for announcements to be um, to happen and follow directions. So some potential concerns, um, many of our honor guests do have a seizure disorder. A few things that we've taken, um, I guess, in, in account and just put a little bit of thought behind is our red carpet experience. When the individuals walk down the red carpet, there's lots of cheering, we have the cameras flashing, the whole big deal. Some of our honor guests 
in the past have written that maybe the loud noises or the lights might be something that they're uncomfortable with. However, when they came down to the red carpet the last two years, every honored guest, even if it was marked they wanted a silent entrance, they all wanted everybody screaming and yelling. So, uh, but if that's the case, we'll ask them again and we'll have a sign that um, is held up for a silent entrance. So if you just ra wave your hands, that's a silent applause and we'll have signs and stuff if needed there. Um, in the case of a seizure, just the biggest things you can do are just make sure that they're in a safe environment, they're lower to the floor. If they have a seizure and they're in a wheelchair, the safest place for them is in their wheelchair. So we're not gonna move anybody out of a wheelchair for that case. Um, just note the time that it started. That's very helpful for our emergency professionals that will be here. And then some other things. Wash your hands a lot. A lot of people in this building. Um, middle of flu season, so just make sure everybody's washing hands there. Um, if there is a reason for blood care, um, we'll have plenty of gloves around and you won't have to take care of that. We have people here that can do that. And then in the case of any kind of fire or building emergency, just again, wait for directions up on the stage and they'll direct you where you need to be going. Our weather contingency. So in the case of bad weather, um, there is none. <laughs> We have to make this happen, one way or another. So first year, some of you were with us for that. Um, the day of the event, level three snow emergencies. It was horrible. Schools were canceled. It was a mess. By the time the event happened, it was 50 degrees. All the snow had melted. And like, it was a perfect evening. And the snow started as soon as the event was done. And that Sunday, like churches were canceled. Everything was canceled on that Sunday. So we're pretty confident that God is in our corner for this, but keep praying now, start praying now, so that we have good weather that night as well. If there's a level three snow, um, snow emergency, that's, we would have to cancel it, and that would be really sad. So we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that we can move on. While at Night to Shine, um, this is a big one. Uh, we've assigned everybody a role, and everybody's role is really important to make this event special for our honored guests. So whatever role you're assigned to, we just ask you stay in that role and you take it seriously. I know you will, um, but it's really important that we're not leaving posts if you, you know, decide you don't wanna be in one particular room one way or another. Um, just please stay there. We do our best to make good assignments. Um, you know, there's 204 on our guests, but 375 volunteers. So even though we have a lot of people wanting to be buddies, not everybody can be. So we you know, do our best to make sure that we have some new, new people in those roles and kind of switch people up if they're interested in doing that. Where you're providing name tag, of course our buddies will have their buddy lanyard, but everybody will have a name tag as well. So just so we can all communicate very easily with each other, make sure you have your name tag on. And then once again, <clears throat> as far as personal belongings go, there's just really not a lot of space here. A lot of people in the building at once, so if you can Keep your purses and coats and all that stuff either in your car or at home. That really will help space here. Um, if you happen to bring anything in, just know that we are not responsible, Caitlin Scottish Family Christian Center or Tim Tebow Foundation, um, for anything that's lost or stolen. Once again, thanks for being here. We're going to do some things a little different than we have in the past. You're extremely integral to this entire event and making it um, as special as it is for our guests. So. If you are a buddy, we ask that you stay here in the room. Everybody else is gonna follow these amazing people out the side door and kind of get a tour of the church and then we're gonna switch it up. So again, if you're a buddy, please stay. Okay, so we're gonna get started here so that we have enough time. Um, once we're finished talking about some stuff specific to buddies, then we're gonna switch. You guys are gonna go on a tour so you know where everything is. Um, once again, um, just a 
um, I guess, quick review of the layout of the event. Where I'm standing now will be a lot more tables and chairs this way. The red carpet is going to be a little bit different as well. Probably the biggest thing for all of you, if you've been here and been a buddy in the past, is that that whole registration when people get here is, is really busy. Um, and so we're trying to stretch it out a little bit and trying to keep it so that there's not as many like people in that one little cafe area at one time. So you can see that at the very top left of the screen. There are the main doors out here. That's where honored guests will be entering. Actually, this year in the past, we've had them enter through the cafe. But this year, we're going to have like some pipe and drape. So when they enter in, they, actually, they will walk across the front. And there will be little stations that they check in with um, asking for medication changes and things like that. Once they reach the end of that like big glass door area, um, that's where their caregiver actually will be asked to move out into um, the red carpet area to take pictures. And our goal is that our buddies will be meeting them at that point. So if you're new to being a buddy, the activity room is where we'll have everybody set up and waiting for their honored guests. As the honored guests enter the red carpet, they turn and they come into the activity room to get professional photography, which is pretty cool. They all get a package with 8x10, 5x7 um, wallets, the whole bit, so that's pretty cool. But as they walk into the activity center, it's kind of another like second red carpet area. You can share and uh, you know encourage people. What's different this year is that we're going to have the flower station inside the activity room. So while everybody's waiting um, in line for their pictures, there's that little thing that they can do as well and hopefully take that, you know, that time that everybody's choosing out of that initial um, startup time. So that should make it run fairly quickly, hopefully. Um, but as your honored guest, there'll be an individual at the front and then um, an individual inside the activity room that we will be texting who's here and we'll call your honored guest name so you'll know that it's your turn to meet up with your but honored guest. So you'll walk the green arrows, walk along the side of the wall, enter in through the kitchen, and then circle around the back side of the cafe and meet your buddy right there as they're parting ways with their caregiver. And then it'll be your responsibility to walk them through the rest of the registration process so it won't be as crowded. We won't have parents and grandparents and honor guests and buddies and everybody in that tiny little cafe space. So we hope that'll be a lot easier. Um, but that's probably the biggest things for you guys. The rest of it will be explained on the tour, but I wanted you guys to be thinking that when you get out there for your tour space. One more time, just remember that this is very important. If for some reason as a buddy you have to use a restroom or you need a break for whatever reason, that lanyard needs to go wherever the honored guest is. So if you have to trade off for somebody, make sure that you give the lanyard and the responsibility to somebody. There's a lot of dance floor attendants that you can trade off with if you need to take a break, but somebody needs to be one-on-one -on -one with that honored guest the entire time. So just keep that in mind that that needs to follow them wherever they are. Okay, so some responsibilities here. Um, you are the honored guest guide for the night. Um, keep in mind that we've made, again, selections for our buddies on purpose and hopefully have you paired with somebody that we think will have a great time with you for that evening. Um, one thing that I always point out is that sometimes the lines are a little fuzzy for some of our honored guests as far as, you know, whether you're their date or whether you're their friend. And so just keep that in mind as you kind of move through. We didn't select honored guests and buddies based on gender. Um, we based it by who we thought would be good pairs. So there will be male, male, female, female, male, female, all of those things. But just keep in mind that sometimes our honored guests need a little bit of um, boundaries to happen. And, you know, definitely be friends, but make sure that they're clear otherwise. Um, your goal is to provide a meaningful and enjoyable night. So get them around to all the activities, have a great time, be on the dance floor. Um, it should be a lot of fun for everybody. Again, never leave your honored guests unattended. Um, probably a big thing is that even if it says independent on their um, lanyard for restroom, the idea of taking the time to do that <laughs> might be on the least thing, you know, the last thing on their mind. So it might be, you know, appropriate for you to say, hey, you know what, before we go in the limo or the trolley, how about we stop and have a potty break just so that they feel like they're not missing out because um, otherwise, you know, if there was an accident or something that were to happen, 
um, no big deal, we can take care of that. If on your body lanyard it says that somebody is full assistance with the restroom, don't panic. Um, I have four of my staff from Caitlin's Cottage that will be here that will help with any restroom needs that anybody has. So you're not responsible for taking somebody into the restroom and managing that. One of my staff can. They'll be out there by the restrooms wearing Caitlin's Cottage shirt. You just need to grab one of them and let them know that your honored guest needs some help. Okay. If for some reason you have um, difficulty interacting with your buddy um, or your honored guest, or you're just not quite sure with communication or how to manage the food or whatever the case is, our Night to Shine Steering Committee is here to help you walk through any of those needs. So make sure that you know you could just reach out to one of us and we could help you. Um, one thing I will point out is that last year uh, we switched our caterers from the first year to the second year. And the caterers that we use are from the hospital. And so they're very used to providing pureed meals and thickeners and liquids and all of those different things. What's really cool is that instead of just having a pureed spoonful on a plate of chicken or whatever it is, they took the time to get molds and work it up with different thickeners and things that the items that are being served that are pureed actually look like chicken or look like beef. And so that's one thing that's really cool. Um, and last year we even had honor, or a buddy that you know double checked and said, hold up, my, uh, my buddy or my honored guest is supposed to have pureed food and we had to tell them to stick their fork in it because it really, it really was pureed. Um, but I think it's cool that they take the time to, to make it look like that for us. So, um, Staying in contact with your honored guest is encouraged by all means. So just, um, you know, take the, you, you can be friends on social media, whatever the case. If they're minors, make sure you've cleared that with their, with their caregiver when they pick them up. But uh, many of our honored guests are very good on social media as well. So just be aware that they're going to find you probably one way or another. Uh, at the end of the night, we're going to have cards where every where you can write a little a note to your honored guest about you know having a good time that evening, and they really do enjoy that. In fact, some of them were anxiously awaiting them. We collect them, and then when their packages, their photo packages come in, we send them to them, and so it's kind of a nice little surprise a couple weeks after the event that they get a little note from you. So it's pretty cool. So to make sure you take the time to do that. Okay, so this group should be wrapping up here soon with their tour. Um, just want everybody to really think about why they're here. And being, being a, a buddy is a big job. Um, it's so important to our honored guests, and they are excited to get to know you. We've been getting Facebook messages and emails and phone calls about who their buddies are. They want to know right away. So they're excited to meet you and be part of this. This is such a huge responsibility, and being the buddy for the evening really sets the tone for their experience, and there are so many of them that have never had the opportunity to be at a prom and to, be, and to feel like they're stars. This is a population of individuals that are so often underserved and under-celebrated, and this is really an opportunity for all of us just to um, you know, rejoice in their lives and just be excited for them. This is going to change your life. This event, if you haven't been part of it before, I promise you this is going to be bigger than anything that you can imagine. It's one of those things that I still get chills every time I watch the video. Um, when we think about it and we come back to planning, these ladies stepped up because it was big enough to them that they wanted to be part of the planning. So if you're new to this, it's exciting. And um, I guess I'm going to open this up to question for the next few minutes till we'll wait for, until this group comes back. Does anybody have any Questions or concerns? You guys are so quiet. <laughs> Chris, do you have anything you want to say? Oh.
Does anybody have any experiences they want to share, especially if, you, if you've been a buddy before? I mean, the amount of joy. We've said this, like, after the first year, we start meeting in August, and then all the way through, and then as we get closer, especially after Christmas, we start meeting, you know, on a weekly basis, if not more than um, once a week as needed. And the first year, we thought, okay, well, maybe maybe we need to take a break. Maybe we're not going to do this every year. Maybe it's every other year. And as we were all, like, passed out all over the floor, you know, then after that first year, laying there, and we're like, Okay, well, when do we meet again to start for next year? Um, you know, I get to do this every day. I get to work with some really cool people every day at Caitlin's Cottage, and it's, you know, such a joy to have that opportunity. But this event is maybe the, one of the most important things I've done in my career. Um, it's just spectacular. It's so special to be part of just seeing. Um, when you watch the video, there's a little guy kind of down in the corner, the highlight video, and as they're crowning, he's just so excited. Um, and cheering, his buddy said last year that all, um, all, all night long, he kept asking her, do you think I'm going to be king? I don't know that I'm going to be king, but do you think I can win? Like, maybe I can win. And then for us to, like, somehow capture it on video as he's crowned, I mean, everybody in the room is crowned. Um, and yet, you know, for him, he's just cheering. He's so excited that it was him. On crowning, one thing I want to talk about is that the crowning ceremony is a big deal. We have um, a message from Tim Tebow, we get up on stage, and as the crowns happen, the balloons were dropped, all of that stuff. So as a table attendant, they're going to go and get the crowns and tiaras and bring them back to the table. It's very important that you hang on to the crowns and the tiaras until the actual crowning moment, and you'll know when that is, because we'll say it when that is. Um, in the first year, we had some, you know, premature crowning happening, um, and, you know, kind of takes the the bang off the night for some people. They probably didn't care either way, but just know that that's, you know, an important part of the evening. After the event, we're going to have a controlled release. Everybody will bring, come back into this room, and Scott usually is up here announcing as we get notification that the caregivers are here to pick up their individual. Um, we'll announce the names, and then at that point, your responsibility is to take them out to meet with their caregivers. It's important to note, and I guarantee somebody in this room will be here with us waiting because some caregiver is behind coming to pick them up and it's happened the last two years. We've had one or two every single year. So please don't leave your honored guest until you know that it's time or that their caregiver is here. Um, and we may have to make phone calls and we may have to figure out where people are coming from um, to make sure that the honored guests are picked up. But until you're released, um, please stay with your honored guest and don't just assume that it's 10 o'clock, it's time to go and you guys just leave. Um, we want to make sure everybody's safe. So it's a big, and they're comfortable with you by that point. The red carpet is an experience unlike any other, and it's so much fun. By the time you get through the registration process, you'll have some opportunities to ask the honored guests if, you want, if they want you to walk with them down the red carpet, if they want to do their own thing. The first year my son's been with um, the same individual in the last couple of years. And he learned very quickly the first year, she literally handed him her purse and said, stand there. And so he stood there with her purse while she walked the red carpet, waving, blowing kisses, pointing at people, the whole thing, and he just followed behind her. And it was her moment, not his. Um, same thing with karaoke. She wanted to sing all the single ladies. She asked him if he was a single lady. He said, no. And she said, then sit. And so <laughs> he did, and he was told to like, and she wanted him to cheer and sing him on and all that stuff. Um, but don't, you know, it was her moment. So you'll just have to figure that out. Some of our honor guests want you to come down there with them. You have an opportunity to stop for some photos with a backdrop, you know, like at the Grammys or whatever, and then carry on through the whole event. Um, the TV station's going to be here. It's pretty cool. We asked this year, um, in the past we've had some schools that have, I guess, volunteered to make us some signs for the red carpet. And this year, we sort of threw it out there and asked if anybody, you know, had a classroom or a group of kids, you know, to make some signs. And I think we're going to be, like, really surprised at how many signs we're going to have. 
Um, so we'll have opportunities for, you know, paparazzi to hold up signs that say, like, you're a star and glamorous and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. I'm trying to think of other things for the night. Yeah. Yeah. The tiara was too big for her head. Oh, you want to stay. Okay. That's a good thought. We'll have some bobby pins or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to look and see if they have combs in them or something. But I think that's a good idea, just to have some extra things. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> we also have a seamstress that will be here in case there's um, a wardrobe malfunction of some kind. Last year, our instant command group of people that probably do different kinds of stitches <laughs> more regularly were stitching up pants and dresses and all kinds of stuff for us, but we will have a seamstress um, who can take care of those things if needed. Um, Kircher's Flowers donates all the boutonnieres and the corsages, which is pretty remarkable. If you've been here before, you know that they're just not like carnations wrapped with like, you know, a cheap ribbon. They're roses and, I mean, they, they're prom corsages and boutonnieres. They're pretty amazing. All different colors, all different types of flowers, and the honor guests get to choose which one that they want. So that's something special that you'll be able to ha have that opportunity with them to pick out the right, you know, the one that they love the best. Um, and so Kircher's will be here as well to help if we have any catastrophes with boutonnieres and corsages, which when you're dancing hard, sometimes that happens. We, I'm not kidding about the shoes. We, can, we can't say that enough either. You guys, like your feet, like this group of people can party. <laughs> and karaoke is like a huge place, um, you know, for sure. And then, I mean, they just don't stop. So the dance floor, we had dance attendants, and they, Tim Tebow Foundation suggested we have some, just in case, just to keep the party hopping. Um, and I don't think that we ne probably need them, um, but they're fun to have on the floor as well. But um, this is a group that wants to wants to j dance and enjoy and have a good time. So, um, you know, whether they're mobile or they're in a wheelchair, it doesn't matter, get them out there. The trolley will be great. Um, as mentioned before, um, last year we, kind of made the Caitlin's Cottage bus a party bus because the first year, um, we don't have an option. There are some things at the Tim Tebow Foundation that they say, these are things you must do. And so the first year we were thinking, you know, it's not really fair because not everybody can get in a limo and we weren't gonna do the limos until we were told, where's, you know, where's your limo? So the second year we kind of learned from that and decorated the Caitlin's Cottage bus so that we could have the wheelchair lift if needed. But this year the trolley will be able to have the wheelchair lift on that, which will be pretty cool, and fit just a ton of people in it. So hopefully those little things, you know, help us move the night a lot quicker. We've also started, like, the last year we shut down the activity rooms, or the last two years, as the groups were, the red carpet was happening, we just sort of had some dancing in here going. This year, because of the number of individuals that we have coming, we are opening up the karaoke and the limo rides and things like that before dinner since dinner is gonna start a little bit later this year, hoping that we can get everybody through the registration and the red carpet and all that stuff um, by seven o'clock. But it does mean for those that are here at 5.30 that they need some things to do. So those will be open and you can you know, enjoy those things. We also have a quiet room. So if for some reason your individual is just overstimulated and struggling a little bit, the quiet room is a good place to go. We have two quiet rooms. One of them will have some puzzles and some coloring pages. Um, you know, just really go with the flow. They may not even, they just might want to sit and relax for a little bit. Um, but we do have another room that has massages. So that's really cool. Um, in the activity room, one of the things to point out, not only the magician, of course, for Scott, um, that we're all excited about, <laughs> um, there is an art activity in there. And that's very important to us because we actually are making art pieces that we give to our donors. Um, and so it's, you know, make sure that you get in there and you work with Jennifer Boyd from um, JBO Fine Arts. She's in, she'll be in there with her team. 
So make sure you stop with your honor guest and, and take part in those um, art projects. There'll be canvases this year with some painting projects. And then we put a little plaque on them and send them to our donors. So it's pretty spectacular. This event, if we had to pay for every penny um, of every dress that we give away, every tuxedo, um, every flower, every meal, all of those things. Last year, our event was a $51,000 event. And so it's pretty remarkable the amount of donations that we get so that we don't have to pay $51,000. Uh, Marco's Pizza will be here. You guys will get a meal with, with your honored guests, but um, Marco's Pizza is in the caregiver's room and they'll have food there for them or the other volunteer, like volunteer rooms will be open for food and snacks for our other volunteers. So it's pretty cool that that's all donated, just pizza and salads and everything kind of coming through on our, you know, just, we just had pizzas delivered all night, which is pretty cool. So there's so much that goes into and so many wonderful businesses and organizations. So it's important for us to make sure we thank all of them. Okay, so the next part is that we're going to have you guys, as soon as everybody starts wandering back in here, we're going to have you guys stand up and move towards this door. And then the other group will come on in and cover some stuff with them. Okay, so just as this group is leaving, thank you guys for hanging on a little bit longer. Um, the slide that I have up there right now is just really to ask you why you're here. There's lots of different reasons that we all come here. Sometimes we're voluntold by our spouses, our parents, or whatever the case is. Um, but we hope, you know, no matter the reason that you are here today, when you leave today, you'll have a different purpose in your heart or be ha have a renewed purpose for really how important this event is. Um, you have the ability to, to change somebody's life for the better. And, you know, that may sound cliche or something, but it really is the truth. Each single person that's sitting in this room today, um, I don't want anybody to think that because, you know, you're not a buddy, that this is a job that's less than, and that's absolutely not the case. Um, it's very important for us to have all kinds of different individuals help for that night um, to happen. There's 204 on our guests, um, and so the rest of, you know, 204 buddies, everybody else, um, which is, you know, over 170 individuals um, are here to make sure that the entire event runs as smoothly as possible for our honored guests and that it really is something to remember. So um, if you are a dance floor attendant, um, as mentioned before, you're free to dress up um, you're going to be part of, you know, of the dance floor, keeping things moving. You'll be surprised at how much um, our honored guests enjoy the dance floor. So be ready for a party, jump in, and engage with our honored guests, um, and just remember again that you're here just to be part of, of the fun for them. There might be an opportunity or a time that one of our buddies of our honored guests may need to use the restroom or may need a break for whatever reason they may hand the, the lanyard that they're wearing to you or any volunteer in this, in this room for that matter. If that's the case, if somebody has handed you a lanyard, a lanyard of an honored guest, then you are now the buddy for that time being, um, just so that they can run to the restroom, get a drink, whatever that they need to do. So keep that in mind um, as well, that you might be called upon to do that. Some of you guys have been told maybe today that you're a backup buddy. 
if that's the case, um, hopefully we don't have anybody that doesn't show up the night of, <laughs> um, but just in case, we want to have those backup buddies in place so that we can hold people and send them down the red carpet and that the honor guests don't know any different at that point. If you have any questions throughout the entire night, please make sure to reach out to any of us. Um, we'll have blue shirts on this year, so you should be able to find us pretty quickly in the group or grab an usher, um, incident command, anybody to help out with the event. Some of you might be a, a room lead for one reason or another, and so hopefully you're a resource as well, and you probably have either been a, a member of the church and know the church very well, or you've been a member and a volunteer for several years, so that's why we've chosen you for that. Okay, so if you're a table attendant, this is also a very important job. The meal is a big deal. It's a big deal for our honored guests. And we have learned every year and hopefully getting better and better for it. The first year we had a buffet and found that that was a really long process and many of our honored guests struggled with waiting in line for their buffet. So the second year we had plated dinners and we asked all of our table servers to run back and get plates and, and bring them out to the tables worked better. But this year, um, we feel we have a better option. The team from Sodexo is actually, because they're very comfortable carrying big trays of food, they're gonna bring big trays out to each of the tables. And if you're a table server, you probably have two tables that you're going to be in, um, responsible for. So they're going to set the t um, tray down in front of the table, and then you'll serve from that point. Please make sure that you're paying attention to the body lanyard, because we do have people with dietary needs all of our meal from start to finish is gluten-free and dairy-free, which is a good thing. So if you have that written on it, you don't have to worry about those things. Um, but you might see that somebody has, that they are eating pureed food or that they need a thickener in their liquids. Again, their buddy is somebody who no, understands what that means. But just make sure, be a double, you know, an extra set of eyes to make sure that we're not serving something to somebody that they shouldn't have. Then, let's see, what else? Uh, making sure that drinks are filled. We're going to have water stations um, under the screens this year, so they should be able to be reached pretty quickly to make sure that everybody has water and we won't run out. Um, check in often. This is an opportunity for you as well to get to know these on our guests. So um, what better way than, you know, kind of be part of their meal and part of their fun during that time frame. You're going to be responsible for clearing tables after the meal. And then if you have any questions or concerns, we have various individuals throughout the ballroom that are you know, knowledgeable and responsible. We have um, an ER physician that will be circulating for the event. We have nurse practitioner that will be in the ballroom. We have RNs, the whole bit. So if there's a question about a meal or a question about an allergy or you have any kind of concern during the meal time, make sure you grab either one of those individuals or one of our Night to Shine crew members. During the event or at the end of the event, if you're a table server, you're going to be part of the crowning responsibilities. So we'll announce, it'll probably be about 8.15 or so, that you'll have to um, move to the instant command and you're going to be the ones that, that you're going to be taking the crowns from there and bringing them back to your tables. So it's important to realize that our crowning is a big deal. We have a video that we watch, we have a big balloon drop. So when you're handing the crowns to the buddies, don't let them crown anybody before it's time to crown. So just take that moment, hold on to them. Um, they're gonna want their crowns right away, but we wanna make sure that everybody's crowned at the same time. We bring them up close, close to the dance floor so when the balloons drop, everybody's right there with the crowns. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so room event or any kind of a room or event attendee. Um, if you're parking, this is really an un- like like a thankless job, I think, but it's such a big deal for our honor guests. We do valet parking for the family, so they come up to the front and they don't have to wait, um, or if the weather's bad, they don't have to worry about walking through the parking lot. They can drop off right up front, so that's pretty cool. They have you know their own T-shirts, and they'll be really busy, dressed for the weather, and make sure that you're ready for that out there. Um, everybody in, that has a parking responsibility has been chosen because not only do they have a kind personality, but they have a firm personality, and um, that's you know definitely part of the job there. If you're a part of ki um, karaoke or limo, that room is a lot of fun. 
It um, takes place, you guys probably walked through over there. It's a party all on its own. And so that's a good time. Um, and just, you know, keep things moving in there. Um, if you're a limo attendant, usually what happens is that little group of people will take turns either riding the limo or the trolley, and somebody else will be in charge of checking people in and out so we know where everybody is as well. Pay attention to the hole punches as well so that we know who has participated already. And again, it doesn't mean that they can't do it a second time or a fifth time. It just means that we're going to give those that haven't had the opportunity a first try. So that'll be part of, you know, a big night for that too. And then again, there's a two-minute lim two limit for singing. Um, and our folks, I mean, we had the national anthem song one year. I mean, the whole bit. <laughs> it's, this karaoke room is no joke. It's a lot of fun. But hopefully the two-minute time frame will keep things moving along in there. Um, we have two quiet rooms. One of them will be puzzles and coloring pages, which is um, a good time, you know, and just a time to decompress and be sensitized if, if things are, you know, this event's got a lot going on. And so it's a good room for a lot of folks. Um, and then we have a massage room as well. So, you know, definitely um, encourage if you see somebody that's getting agitated or, or upset that they have those opportunities that they can take some moments as well. Volunteer parent room. Um, this is important because um, as parents, if you're a parent, you probably understand that you know, as much as you want to go to homecoming with your kids, they generally don't want you going. Um, and even though every year I've suggested, you know, that I can come in and dance and it would be fun, my kids every year tell me no. So it's not any different for our honor guests and their parents, and they're going to try every way possible to get into the dance floor and to see where they are. The great thing is that um, from Free Christian Church, we have a live feed of the entire event circulating between the rooms into the caregiver room so they can see what's going on without having to peeking in here. But if you're part of the, this room, it is definitely, you know, we're asking that if they need to use the restroom, that somebody at least walks with them back and forth. Everybody that's sitting here right now has had a background screening. Everybody here has been vetted to be in this position. And, you know, not all of our honor guests, um, you know, we don't know anything about their caregivers, and I'm sure they're all great people, but just to be sure, it's one of those things, it's a safety thing for us, that anybody interacting with our honor guests throughout the night, that they've had that background screening. So that doesn't mean that our, our parents are kind of escorted back and forth, and um, they try, I mean, they'll, they'll try to peek in for sure. Um, but it is a good opportunity for them just to chat, hang out, ask questions, you know, and just keep their night enjoyable if you're part of that room. Registration, coat check, flowers, if you're part of that group, um, every year we're getting better and better at this, but you know, this year we added 60 more people. So even though we thought we, you know, we were pretty good, um, we've had to be even more creative this year. So you'll get some instructions the night of. The ladies that have been in charge of registration have been putting thought into it for a year now. So they will have lots of suggestions and things on how things go. Um, you may also be part of helping with the crowning and stuff like that as well. So about 8.15 or so, everybody go to Instant Command and help bring those things back for us. All right. Shoe shiners. We have at least one here. <laughs> um, again, we ordered new kits this year, so that's an opportunity in the activity room for our honored guests as well to go have their shoes shined and just another opportunity to really feel like they're special and that it's a big night. So it's definitely worth taking, you know, a couple of minutes out just to sparkle up some shoes there. If you're an usher, we have one. Um, again, you've been picked because of your personality. <laughs> Not only because uh, of being a friendly person, but, uh, you know, a strong personality as well. So, um, and your knowledge of the church, of course, too. So thank you for that. Environmental services, this is another thankless job as well. Um, you know, keeping things, just trash and food and all of those things picked up um, is a huge um, aspect of our evening as well so that everything just looks perfect and, and pretty all night long. And you might have to stop, step in if somebody spills a drink or, you know, there's a disaster somewhere. But um, usually, you know, it's an opportunity to just kind of circulate throughout the event and enjoy everybody as well, too. So thank you for 
taken on that role as well. And then security um, directions will be given that night as well. So we have security in place just in case. We're not asking our security guards to tackle somebody that's having a, you know, a moment. Um, that's where, um, especially our Caitlin's Cottage crew, are great resources in, in that case if somebody's, you know, having a behavior or, or a meltdown of some, ki some kind, um, chances are they're probably really overstimulated. And so we can help with that. We do that every day. So um, definitely ask for help in those cases. Does anybody have any questions for me about your roles? Yes. No, I would say in that time frame as well. Um, usually what happens is that we have everybody here by five o'clock, that's the goal. So that way, hopefully we know if we're missing anybody's and need to pull some people. Um, but that's also an opportunity for us to meet as teams and directions being given at that night. Um, and so you'll, you'll have all of your responsibilities um, laid out and where you're supposed to be and all that stuff as well if you're part of the registration team. Anybody else? This is a quiet group. It must be the weather, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know that, you know, we could probably say, th say this enough. I'm lucky enough to work at Caitlin's Cottage and to interact and be part of lives of some really cool people all the time. And, you know, this is a night that probably easily has become one of the most important nights that I've ever been part of. And um, I think that says a lot. I get chills every time thinking about it. Um, we put a lot of time into planning. Um, we start meeting as a team in August, and then as we get closer to the event, just after Christmas, we start meeting on a weekly basis, if not bi-weekly or more than that if needed, and then the, the week or so up right in front of the event is just pure chaos and fun and um, a lot of hours, and, um, you know, it goes without saying that even though that first year we were exhausted at when we got to the event, and um, really kept thinking, maybe we'll do it every other year. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can't do this every year. Um, we were all just exhausted and kind of laying out all over the floor after everybody had left after that first one. Um, and it was just kind of unanimous. We were all like, so when do we start planning for the next year? It's just such a fun night. And no matter what role that you have, um, you have the opportunity to affect so many people. This is a population of people that are not only often underserved, but they're definitely under-celebrated. And it's just a big deal. It's a big deal to be part of it. There are people that have never been to a prom before that get the experience. There are people that, you know, maybe have been to proms, but nothing like this. And this is, you know, again, red carpet, paparazzi. This room is totally transformed into a beautiful ball gown. It's not, you know, cheesy kind of school dance sort of thing. <laughs> it's more like a gala event. Um, and we're just lucky enough, it's a f if we had to pay for every thing, every dress that we give out, every tuxedo, every corsage, um, you know, every detail of the entire event. Um, last year, our total for the event would have been $51,000. And so it's, it's a big deal. It's a big event. And we're just blessed that we just don't have to pay that because people just contribute. And whether it's, you know, treasures and, you know, and monetary donations or gifts in kind, um, you know, you guys are here and you're giving us the gift of your time. And that's super important. And it's really just, just a fun night to be part of as well. Does anybody have any questions about red carpet or night of? How many of you guys are new this year? That's probably part of it. Okay, so not too many that are new. <laughs> That's why this is probably a kind of a quiet night. Chris, do you want to say anything?
for all crows. <laughs> yeah, this. If your table server, I guess one thing I didn't mention, last year you were running the entire night. It was, it's definitely busy. Don't <laughs> underestimate the amount of time that you'll be spending. So our goal is, is that hopefully during the red carpet time frame that you guys go back and grab some food, get a drink if you're needed, and you know take breaks and um, grab help if you need a, a moment. But last year, probably the table servers were the one group that didn't get any kind of time to take a break. So we want to make sure that you have that opportunity before the event really even starts um, or during the red carpet time. You know, grab some food if, you know, if you need to. Um, and that will be there. Everybody else pretty much during the dinner time is a good place, a good time for you guys to go over to the volunteer room and grab, you know, a, a slice of pizza or we have um, wings coming from Uncle Lena Tavern. So that, you know, will be probably gone fast. But um, the red carpet is really a lot of fun. Make sure you take the time to hang out there for a little bit because, you know, they are superstars when they come down the red carpet. Um, my son has been a buddy with the same girl the last couple of years, which is pretty fun. But the first year, he, you know, wasn't quite sure how she was going to do the red carpet and then learned very quickly when she handed him her purse and said, stay there. And he just stood there with her purse and my son is like 6'3", like big tall guy, and this little girl, she's teeny tiny. They were an odd couple. It was really cute. I mean, he followed behind her on the red carpet, like just with her purse. And she was waving, you know, blowing kisses, pointing at her fans, like the whole bit. So it's, it's an experience for sure how many of those individuals get, you know, strut down the, on, down the red carpet. It's pretty cool. So don't miss that. That's a lot of fun to be part of. But anything else? I don't know, like this is a quiet group. Um, the night of, um, just take the opportunity. One thing I should point out is that we do have all the cool things with pictures so that you can post on social media with a hashtag and that we can play them and they'll be live. But just remember that this night is about our honored guests and attention really should be given to them. So while we have those opportunities for the phones to be out and for things to go, um, you know, pick the right opportunity to be posting things and, and making sure our focus is on our, on our on our guests and not into a phone. So that's a big thing. Um, but we're excited to have that have that and have those interactive things. I think they will be a lot of fun to have often have people, you know, their faces on on the screens and stuff. We'll be excited about all of that as well. I know that it's a lot to ask everybody. We have our volunteer registration starting at four o'clock. And, you know, we know that people are working. Um, but again, if you can take the opportunity just to take a few hours off that day and get here on time, um, it really does, does help us because that's kind of a crunch time for us to figure out who's here and if we need to, you know, move people around and grab people to, to help with, you know, being buddies. Um, it's really important to us for that. So thank you for really taking the time out and, and knowing that this is a – this is a big deal for everybody. So, all right. They should be about done, I would think. They haven't even crossed. Oh, my gosh. They're, it's the tours today are what's taking up the time. <laughs> Well, they are just in the activity room. <laughs> Let's see what they're up to.
the next part that we do, we just have a few things to go over as a group with everybody. And then at, at that point, we'll release anybody who's been a volunteer before. You don't, I mean, you're welcome to stick around for the next section as well, but it's really kind of catered towards those that haven't been part of the group before. So we'll see. The dinner is here in the ballroom. The table tenants will. Um, the servers from Sodexco will bring in the meals, but then after, you know, clearing up the plates and stuff like that. One of the questions that always gets asked by our honored guests is if they can have seconds. <laughs> um, and that's a really difficult thing because obviously we don't have seconds. Um, there'll be desserts there. Um, but that, I would suggest, would be an opportunity to start cleaning up tables and stuff, because if they're fixated on, on the food aspect, um, you can help really help with that and kind of encourage them to get, go off and try a different activity and, you know, and leave the room for a little bit and change their focus. Well, they're, they should be wrapping up. They're around, circling the corner, so. <laughs> is Eli extra talkative out there? Is that what's happening? The last couple times I'm up here trying to, like, squeeze things in, and <laughs> it must be Sarah. <laughs> oh, Scott, yeah. We'll blame Scott. Didn't he, he spent a lot of time talking about the magician, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> The activity room is a lot of fun as well, um, so it's important for you know our honored guests to get the opportunity to go in there. And we just every year are trying to um, make it a little bit more exciting, something different and new. Our decorations, um, which is pretty fantastic. I've met with Brad Stover, especially the first year. I met with him, and I had our budget um, that we thought we were going to spend on on decorations and. Um, he said, well, just tell me your dream. Tell me what you want. And so I kind of talked about all these different things. And he was like, um, what's your budget? <laughs> so I told him my budget. And he was, told me I was probably about $6,000 off um, from what my dreams were. Um, so I said, well, OK, well, tell me what you can do you know, for, for what we can pay. Um, and he sat for a minute and then said, you know what? We're just going to do it all. So it's a huge um, donation. And this year, we've kind of made things a little bit even fancier in here, so it'll be pretty cool to see all of that as well. Trying to think of some other big donors that we've had that have just really been spectacular. The, the Beauty Comes from the Heart is a fantastic organization. Um, this lady gave us a call the first year and mentioned that people have been sharing the event with her. She has a nonprofit organization through a church that she belongs in, I think in like La Cion area. That no Pettisville. That she uh, collects prom dresses or any kind of you know formal dress, and then allows girls or women um, to come in for any event that they might have. They can make an appointment and come in and pick out a dress for either free or for a free will donation. And uh, we were just trying to think how we were going to come up with enough dresses with enough sizes. And she gave us a call. So that has been a huge thing. We bring about a thousand dresses over to Caitlin's Cottage and set up a dress boutique, and the girls get to come in and try in dresses and pick out jewelry and uh, you know, pose in front of the mirror and get their picture taken and all that stuff. So it's really a cool part to be part of that. The first year, as we were talking about how cool it was going to be to have these dress boutiques, um, I had a community member ask me, well, you know, what about the guys? What are you going to do for them? And it was like, that, that one was harder. It's all, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to pull together shirts and ties and pants how would we even figure out what sizes we would need? Um, and he said, well, why don't they get tuxes? And I'm like, well, because that's not a donation. <laughs> We'd have to pay for those. Um, so he told me, you know what, just I'm going to pay for a couple of tuxedos and just give me a few days and we'll come up with the rest. And so for the last three years, we've actually had a tuxedo fitting as well for our men. And that's a lot of fun. They get to pick out which color tux they want and color, you know, bow ties or ties or any of those different things and it's a, it's really cool to see them have that opportunity the day of we have so many salons and barbershops and 
nail salons a whole bit, so they get to, you know, have that whole experience of getting their hair done and nails done and makeup done. And Newell from Prometicus, fantastic, lots of really, like, pretty, you know, makeup choices and stuff. The girls enjoy going there as well. So um, we're pretty blessed with how much this community has stepped up to be part of this event with us. And, of course, all of you as well. Okay, so one, I guess, little thing before we dismiss those that have been part of the event before is we have a message here from Tim Tebow that we want everybody to take a few minutes and just sit back and, and hear his words, which are, are pretty good. And Eli in here last time, okay, last time I think you had to start it for us, so we'll see. Maybe turn up the volume. What's up, guys? I'm Tim Tebow, and I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you and your ministry more than you could possibly know. I am so grateful that you have chosen to partner with us, but more than partner with us, to love on people and to value people. You know, when we started Night to Shine a few years ago, we started in 44 locations, 26 states, and three countries. And we thought, man, God is so big. He's opening up so many doors. This is so cool. But then to be able to see how God opened more and more doors. And this year, we're going to have over 700 locations in over 30 countries and have over 215,000 volunteers. And while those numbers, they're exciting because we want to reach every single person with love and the good news of the gospel. And we want every single kid with special needs to understand their value and their worth. We don't do it just for the numbers, we do it for the one. And why I wanna make this video and say thank you to you is because you are going to affect the one. The one that God has for you, the one that is gonna be your buddy, the one that you're gonna cheer for on the red carpet, the one that you're gonna crown as the king or the queen of the prom, the one that you're gonna hug, the one that you're gonna dance for. God is gonna use you to change the one. And that one is waiting for you, that one needs you. God has designed you to meet that one that you're gonna change their life, but probably God's gonna use them to help change your life too. You know, at the Tim Tebow Foundation, we have some non-negotiables. And one of those non-negotiables is that everyone matters. No matter where they're from, no matter their background, no matter what they've done, they matter. Everyone matters. And why Night to Shine is so special is because we want to celebrate people and specifically celebrate people with special needs. And why they have a red carpet and why they get crowned as a king or the queen of the prom because it signifies significance and worth, meaning, and value. But why do we value everyone? Because God puts a value on everyone. You see, he gave his best for everyone. And that includes every single person with special needs. And so I am so excited to see you celebrate every single person with special needs on the red carpet, on the dance floor, crowning them king or queen of the prom. Because do you know what happens when a life realizes that it's valuable, that it's created in the image of God, that it is loved unconditionally, and it's good and it's bad, that it is loved, that he is loved, that she is loved. Everything changes, everything changes. And guys, we get to bring that love, God's love to the world. And you are a conduit of that. You get to bring God's love. And I am so grateful that you're doing that through Night to Shine. That you're saying, yes, I'm willing to give up my time, my energy, my resources. And I'm ready to affect the one. But I believe God has someone for you. Because you're going to affect their life and they're going to affect yours. And I'm grateful that you said yes. And together, I really believe we're going to change a lot of lives. So thank you for saying yes, guys. God bless you.
remarkable that we can do this here in Defiance. And we have individuals coming from, I mean, just everywhere. I think as they hear about how cool our night shine is, um, that's what's really cool, you know, is that we have people from Lucas County and, you know, Lima and, I mean, the whole bit. People are, you know, Defiance is really a destination for, for night to shine, and it's pretty cool that our little community, I also, I mean, I, I say that all the time, especially with, like, Caitlin's Cottage and, I mean, even with Family Christian Center, and just to really recognize that they have the opportunity to affect lives by having the engaged ministry. Um, it happens because this is, this is Defiance. And I can say that I come from Columbus, and um, I just felt, you know, there's just something special about small community and, and people standing up and, and pulling together and do something this amazing. So thank you for being part of it. If you have been part of Night to Shine before, you're welcome to leave. You're also welcome to stay. Um, any questions that you might have about your role or about Night to Shine, the team is going to be outside waiting out there for you. And then if this is your first year, we do ask that you stay for just a little bit longer so that we can cover a few things that hopefully will be helpful for you. Okay, so we're going to get started on just a few things. Eli, you want me to handle this or you want to come up? Okay. <laughs> um, I mentioned it before, but Family Christian Center um, is just really special for us to be part of. Back, you know, three years ago, Chris and I, you know, had a conversation about how cool it would be. We both kind of heard of Night to Shine and thought that would be something for Caitlin's Cottage to be part of. And um, I even reached out to the Tim Tebow Foundation, asked about Caitlin's Cottage, you know, being the host, and because of it being a Christian organization, they, you know, they really want the church to be part of that. So I thought, okay, well, you know, someday, it'll happen someday, we'll, we'll start reaching out or something. I ran into an individual um, in the community, just randomly, never met her before, and started talking about Caitlin's Cottage and what we do there, and some people that we, you know, we knew, and she asked me if I'd ever heard of Night to Shine, and I said, yeah, but we can't do it because, you know, we're not a church, and so we need to find a church, and she explained to me about the amazing ministry that Family Christian Center has here, and that they, she just knew that, you know, this church would, you know, step up for sure, and so, again, it was just sort of like a group of us got together, each from each organization, and quickly found out that this was going to be something that we could do. So Family Christian Center actually has a ministry here called Engage, and their goal is that, you know, they want the opportunity for anybody to come to church, um, regardless of whether or not you have special needs, and the idea of whole families being together and not having to separate out because somebody has special needs. So they have a really cool program um, where they pair up each individual with special needs. It's really, at this point, um, catered towards children, and they have the opportunity to be part of learning um, about Christ and just being, um, you know, one of God's children. So it's pretty cool. They have an awesome room um, over where karaoke takes place that's um, like a sensory kind of really cool place to hang out as well for those individuals. So, And a little bit about Caitlin's Cottage, if you're not aware. We are behind Defiance Regional Hospital and actually part of Chromatica Health System. And our mission is that we provide respite, um, you know, safe and nurturing respite for individuals with special need and, you know, have compassionate professionals on, on staff that can, you know, take care of all of the basic needs of an individual, whether it be hygiene or behaviors, seizure disorders, medications, um, all of those different things. Um, we can provide service daytime, evening, um, or even up to a week at a time. We have four bedrooms, so although the individuals don't live with us, <laughs> although I would be happy if they did, and I think I live there sometimes. Um, they actually, you know, live at home with their caregivers, whomever they may be. And by definition, the term respite means a break. And so certainly we can imagine um, how being a caregiver of somebody with special needs is um, definitely a lot of work. Um, in 24-7, 
just every day until. And, you know, I think that the idea of respite for a caregiver is something, you know, that should be there. Um, we all have opportunities. Um, some of us uh, with individuals with special needs in our family are going to have, you know, sometimes difficulty finding somebody or someone's to step up and help with respite for that matter. But at Caitlin's Cottage, we also like to look at the idea of a break for our participants as well because we all need a break from the people we live with. And, you know, my kids need a break from me. Well, you know, I can't understand why, but it's the same for all of our um, participants that come to Caitlin's Cottage too. We have opportunities for just some really cool things for them um, to take part of and just social activities and opportunities for summer camps and hanging out with friends in an environment that isn't work, isn't another hospital stay, another therapy session or doctor's appointment. It's a fun place. So everybody usually asks who's Caitlin and, you know, and always want to know about her family. Caitlin is a 25-now-year-old young lady that lives here in Defiance with her family. Um, parents are Chris and Dad Josh, and she has two sisters, Jaden and Ava, as well. But a significant donation was made because Grandma had a dream that there was a place, you know, for Caitlin to hang out, a safe and nurturing place with friends. And so Grandma and Grandpa actually um, donated a million dollars to start Caitlin's Cottage. The community quickly came behind and donated another million and a half to get things going. We operate about 95% off of donations. So our individuals that come to us, we're not asking them to pay an arm and a leg to get the services that they do. Some of our families come for free because it's the right thing to do and their families need the respite. So again, we serve individuals with developmental disabilities. Why is my thing not working? The youngest that we have served at Caitlin's Cottage um, was just under two, and the oldest in our demographics list is 71. So, you know, again, just because um, you have a child with special needs doesn't mean that your job will be, you know, ever done, really. And so it's important to note that we are part of these individuals' families for kind of the long haul. So quick question, what do you call a person with a disability? Thank you. A person. Um, I actually had the opportunity to speak with classroom, classrooms of fifth graders last week, and um, it was interesting to hear, you know, just, you know, they were trying, you know, to come up with all of these different terms and couldn't figure out what I was talking about. And then when it just dawned on them, you know, somebody would say, well, just a person? And I'd be like, exactly. <laughs> we aren't who, we aren't our labels. We are who we are. And I think it's um, one of those things that I want to take the opportunity to go through now is because we so often forget that the individuals that are served here, um, and, uh, you know, as honored guests at Night to Shine or, you know, that we come in contact with in our daily lives, you know, they're just a person first, just like the rest of us. They're, they're not their label. This was in our newsletter last time. Hopefully you got a ha chance to read over these. If I had all of the time in the world, I would read these to you and I'd cry with you. And um, but there's a lot of really important, I guess, things on here. And so please take the time. You can Google it or go back to our newsletter and look those over because they really just speak for why we're here and why it's important for us to make sure that all of our honored guests feel as special as they should be. So while at Night to Shine, obviously, you're going to have many opportunities to come in contact with um, our honored guests and have the opportunity to interact with all of them. And I just want to make sure that, you know, especially if you've not had the opportunity to hang out with somebody with special needs, that you um, just have every opportunity at this point just to have some tips and tricks for communication and just hanging out. So um, certainly our guests will range from either nonverbal or very, 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 very verbal, <laughs> some of them. So um, all of it comes down to it really is just important to take the time and get to know the honor guest and be patient with them because one way or another they're going to, you know, have lots of things to express to you. Um, if they are hard to understand, just take the time. It's going to be hard. It's going to be loud. There's going to be a lot of things going on. But you know what? They're used to offering different ways to express themselves. So it's not rude to say, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you explain it to me again? Or can you say that again? 
or, you know what, I'm still not getting it. Can you show me? Or can you write it down for me? Um, draw a picture, whatever the case is. Um, one of the Beatitudes that was listed, listed before was, you know, blessed are those who take the time to listen to difficult speech because all I want is to be understood. And so that's a huge thing. Just take the time and listen, and um, it's worth it. Um, engage with anybody, even if they can't respond verbally. Um, one of the cool things really early on was when my daughter, Paige, met Caitlin for the first time. She was little. You know, Kate, Caitlin wasn't little. Paige was little. Um, and we just, you know, I asked her. She'd spent, you know, so much time sitting with Kate and just talking and talking and talking. And I said, you know, you had a lot to say. <laughs> you know, what was Kate talking about? And she was, was like, and I, she goes, Mom, Kate doesn't use words to talk. And I was like, well, you know, you were talking to her. And she goes, yeah, because she uses her eyes. And it was like, duh, you know, mom, what are you talking about? And that's it. I mean, Kate is extremely expressive with her eyes and smiles. And, um, you know, so just talk with them, interact with them. It's um, super important to do that. If you have any questions about how to interact with somebody, please just ask any of our members of our crew. We can help you with that as well. Again, active involvement, encouraging words and speak kindly are the biggest things for us. So this is up here, I'm not gonna read everyone, but some of them might throw a few people off as far as why they're up there as a list of offensive terms. Some of them are, are very obvious why they're up there and we've taken time to not say certain words, but just take a second here to, to read over those and I'm gonna go over why some of them are up there that might kind of shock you that they're there. So the word handicapped was up there, and people always ask, why is that up there? We use that all the time. Um, there's a lot of words that are up there, and every family has a different viewpoint as to whether or not they're, they're offensive or not to them. It's better to be safe than to be sorry. And so the reason I put that up there, up there is because I don't think a lot of people understand where the word handicapped came from and um, just the connotation behind it. Back, way back in the days, um, People with special needs were definitely considered less than. They were, you know, shunned from their societies and, and not able to get work and support themselves. And so they were forced to be out on the street with a cap in hand and beg for money in order to live. And so that's where that term comes from, which, you know, again, when we're talking things, handicap parking, handicap bathrooms, um, usually the word that, that we suggest to use is accessible. Um, and it just, you know, has that, it's not a bad word. It's just one of those words that might offend somebody. Um, the key to remembering when we're talking about people with special needs, and hopefully you're hearing it when I'm talking and anybody else here, and like I said before, we're more than our label, and so it's important to put the person first. M many of us, if I you know, came up to somebody and said, um, you know, over there the heart attack man, o over there the allergy girl, like we'd all be like, what are you talking about? That just sounds weird. But why do we say autistic boy? Why do we say, you know, Downs girl? Um, it's so easy for us to do that without thinking about it. And we don't treat other people that way. We don't label people that way. And so it's important to think about putting the person first and not their label. So as we go through here, there's just some ways that um, hopefully get the point across as far as what I'm saying here. So instead of saying a disabled or a handicapped person, um, very easily you would say, a person with disabilities. Instead of saying a special or a special needs person, say a person with special needs. Instead of saying a wheelchair bound person, I guarantee, and Kate's one of them, she's not confined to a wheelchair. That is not 24 seven um, her life. Um, she uses a wheelchair, just like we use our legs to move around. Caitlin has a wheelchair, our individuals have a wheelchair. So again, a person in a wheelchair or a person who uses a wheelchair. So then back to what I was saying before about the label and while people saw autistic or epileptic up there and they thought, why, why are those up there? It's simply for this point, um, putting the person first. So saying a person with autism. Other general tips for communication when offering assistance to a person with a disability you need to wait until your um, assistance is accepted 
don't assume because they have a disability that they want or need your assistance. So just be, pol be polite and ask them if you can push their wheelchair um, or if they need assistance with their wheelchair or need assistance with sitting or walking or any of those things. Just ask first. Address them just as you would any other person. We don't need baby talking. Um, regardless of whether or not we have a disability, a, you know, a 23-year-old doesn't need to be talked to, um, you know, like they're two. So it's just one of those common courtesy things is, you know, just talk like you would with any other person. It is acceptable to offer a handshake during introductions, even if the other person has limited mobility in their hands or no mobility or even has a prosthetic. Um, they're used to that be having that in their daily lives on a regular basis, so they'll offer you their other hand or maybe an elbow bump or whatever the case is, but it's polite just to offer a hand for a handshake just the same as you would with anybody else. Um, if an interpreter is present, speak directly to the person and not to their interpreter. Again, they're used to working that out between the two of them, so your conversation, your eye contact should be with the individual that you're addressing and not the interpreter. Do not lean on anybody's wheelchair, or furthermore, um, don't just move somebody's chair without, again, asking them, or at least letting them know that you're going to do so. Just as it would be so rude of me to walk up and grab Scott's arm and yank him across the room without letting him know, it's the same thing with a wheelchair. Um, you know, just say, hey, everybody's moving over here, let's go over here. Just give them a heads up that you're going to move them. And then, you know, um, furthermore, one of the easiest things to do is forget that the person in a wheelchair um, can't move and change the direction of their attention without assistance sometimes. And so if, you know, you're having a conversation over here and suddenly, you know, we all move over here to keep talking, you know, and then you've got somebody in a wheelchair just staring at a wall when everybody moves. So just pay attention to where the individual is and if they need assistance. Do not interact with service animals without asking first. I don't think that we have any service animals this year um, but just general knowledge, those animals are doing a job, and if they're distracted by somebody petting or talking to them, then they're not able to do the job that they're supposed to be doing. Their attention is diverted. So it's important to ask before interacting with any kind of service animal and not to be offended if you're told that, no, you can't touch the dog or pet the dog at the time frame that it is. So many people, I mean, a cute golden retriever is a cute golden retriever, um, but it's very difficult um, for them to pay attention to their owner if they're, you know, you're rubbing their ears and, and have their attention going that way. Um, if the person that you're speaking with has a visual disability, just make sure that you identify yourself and where you are, um, you know, that you're on this side of them. You can even tap their shoulder and let them know where you are. We do have, um, you know, multiple individuals here um, that have, a vi have visual dis disabilities. So just keep that in mind and making sure that there's enough room um, we had one lady, oh my gosh, she was the best, at the dress boutiques. I was helping her, she, she was so cute. And I was helping her put on some jewelry at the end to, you know, and she would touch it and feel it and make sure, you know, that she liked the shape of it and all that stuff. So when I went to put it on her, um, <laughs> it was so funny because her mom was like, oh, you put that on upside down. I had the crystals on the wrong side. And without even skipping a beat, she hands me her cane, her white cane, and says, here, do you need this? Um, she, so we've got some really uh, amazing personalities. I almost, I mean, it was the funniest thing. She just was a hoot from start to finish. So um, be patient with the person that you're speaking, especially if they have under, um, difficulty understanding you or vice versa. Just take the time, um, and, you know, and keep your voice pleasant and calm. It makes a difference for everybody. <clears throat> some of our folks may need a little assistance with focusing and moving on from one activity to the next. So it might be appropriate where you can take their arm, you know, and gently encourage them to head in one direction or another. Um, be careful in crowded hallways, of course, especially with wheelchairs or those that have canes or maybe a walker, whatever the case may be. And then one other thing is that if, you know, if you're with somebody who um, is in a wheelchair or might have trouble standing um, for one reason or another, if the conversation is going to last for more than really a couple minutes, it's just courtesy just to, you know, either get down at their eye level or offer to sit down and talk with them. We had the opportunity at Caitlin's Cottage this last summer to take some of our honored guests, or honored guests, our participants, um, horseback riding for one of our summer camps. 
and lots of individuals that have never had the opportunity to be on a horse before. And we had somebody up on the horse, and it was their first time, and we asked, you know, what their favorite part of being, um, you know, horseback riding was, and she actually told us that she got to look down on people for the first time, um, which is just a perspective that, you know, we don't think about. Um, being in a wheelchair and constantly having to look up um, at people, um, sometimes it's nice when, when that thought, it, you know, is taken and somebody just sits to talk with them as well. Okay, so really quickly, abuse and neglect, of course, um, that's anything we're going to have any issues with at night to shine, um, but we want to throw it out there that we obviously take any and all allegations of, of any kind of abuse very seriously. So if you happen to witness something that doesn't seem right to you, please uh, um, draw the attention up here for one of us, and we'll make sure that we handle that right away. All beha behavior intervention and ben Interventions at Night to Shine will be person-centered, um, meaning that we're going to approach the um, behavior interventions with respect and courtesy and be, you know, responsive and understanding to potentially, you know, many different um, disabilities that we have and understandings of disabilities. So, our, you know, our goal is safe and fun, and chances are it's going to be fun for everybody. And so we, we really don't see a lot of behaviors because they're having such a great time, they're happy to be here. But in the case that there, there might be something um, or somebody that's getting agitated or upset, again, um, please grab one of us, especially, especially uh, the folks that, you know, um, Sarah is an occupational therapist, and then of course our Caitlin's Cottage crew, um, but any of our um, Family Christian Center individuals are part of the Engage Ministry and have worked quite a bit with um, people with special needs. So please reach out and ask if there's any concern there. So just some prohibited behaviors that we want to go over. Um, Self-injurious behaviors, aggressive behaviors are not going to be, um, you know, tolerated. And we're going to do our best to make sure that we de-escalate any situation there. Sexual behaviors are, are definitely not allowed. Um, before anybody thinks, why would you have that up there? Um, just because you have a disability doesn't mean that, you know, you're still not a young adult <laughs> or an adult. And many of our honored guests, we have several that are married and coming with their spouses. We have several that are dating and coming with their dates. And so, you know, this is a big night for them. It's a night out. But we want to make sure that, you know, our behaviors are appropriate when we're here. And I say that because last year we had um, a couple of honored guests that ditched their buddies. <laughs> and the panic set in. And the buddies, you know, came running you know, um, I don't know where the honored guests are. They, you know, I'm thinking, how did you lose your honored guests? And then when I saw who the buddies were, I knew who the honored guests were. And we found them in the photo booth. And um, evidence was that they were enjoying their night. So it's definitely something that we have to think about um, and just, we, you know, remind everybody that there's a line that can't be crossed at Caitlin's Cottage. So you're not expected by any means to handle a behavior um, please don't feel like it's your responsibility. Grab somebody to help you with that um, and let us take on that responsibility. Um, again, this is, event is for the honored guest. So it's important, you know, although, you know, we're with friends and we're having a good time as well, that our focus is on our honored guest and making sure that it's their night. If you find yourself again in an uncomfortable situation, grab a night design crew member. So there's some list here, I put a list up of some potential signs that somebody may be getting agitated or overstimulated. And as you read through those, those are very often um, just part of having a disability and um, sometimes are very difficult to decipher between whether that's, you know, just the norm for that person or whether it's a sign of overstimulated but it, um, overstimulation, but just keep in mind um, excessive yelling, screaming, crying, fidgeting, jumping, although we have jumpers, so well, like in dance party jumpers, so that one's a hard one, but um, just in general, aggressive behavior is often a sign of just being overstimulated, so we can take, we have quiet rooms for that reason, and you know, we'll definitely help to step in and make that a little bit um, easier for that individual to carry on with the rest of the night. Maintain your composure, speak kindly. I can't say it enough. The more upset you get and the more feelings that you have in your voice, 
The honor guests are going to play off of that. They're looking to you guys, everybody here. So again, just stay calm and never go alone anywhere with our honored guests. So just make sure that, you know, you're not back behind stages or anywhere that's for your safety as well as for theirs as well. So that's where we'll have security moving around um, and ushers and stuff to help keep, keep people from taking wrong turns and all of that. One of the last things that I have on there is just, again, to, to remember that, especially if you're a buddy, um, but for any reason um, here, our honored guests are excited to be, you know, having a night out, and sometimes the line between being a boyfriend or girlfriend um, and an actual date for uh, the, the night can be um, pretty blurry for our honored guests. So just keep those lines there and just encourage, you know, just lots of encouraging words and letting them know that, you know, you're good friends, um, all of those things. So um, everything we do at night to shine is just really going to make a huge impact for all of our honored guests. And we appreciate you guys being here. Does anybody have any questions being a new volunteer? I'm not good, right? Okay, well, that's all we have for you. Um, we look forward to seeing you between 4 and 5 o'clock on February 7th. Thanks, guys.